I, I, I think I would say the same thing that I, uh, I, that I say to myself now. Um, I think that that mission doesn't change, and, and that primarily is to be curious, um, to be inquisitive, um, to work hard. Uh, if you're getting into photography, uh, to shoot a lot and to shoot everything. Um, you know, I, I worked with an assistant once who I, I took to, uh, to Morocco, to the Sahara. And, um, and he was a photographer himself. And, um, and on a day that we had off, I was shooting there for a magazine. So, And on a day that we had off, I said, you know, I'm going to go into the, the Sahara and shoot. And, uh, and he said, ah, you know, it's okay, I, I only shoot people. And I thought it was so short-sighted because we, here we are traveling from abroad and from far away and we had a good opportunity to go see something well. And uh, not that I want to single that out as an example of uh, what I think you shouldn't do, but, uh, but the fact is that there are a million photographs to be taken every single instant and um, many of them are incredibly worth taking uh, and there is untapped inspiration absolutely everywhere and you just have to keep your eyes open and if you're a photographer that's your responsibility is to um, always look uh, had, photographer is a hunter a predator basically hunting for images so if you're asleep at the wheel um, the chances are your work is going to suffer Yes, so I've had a near-death experiences, uh, starting with driving in Moscow. Um, uh, that was, <laughs> seriously, um, the, um, the, the nature of my work is always um, measured with risks. And so um, I fell through the ice in the Arctic um, in minus 35. Uh, and if you don't react very quickly, uh, that can be very fatal. Uh, I was uh, charged by polar bears on uh, different occasions. Uh, those can be really um, treacherous. Um, I put my leg through a crevasse once, which was um, very lucky because admittedly, had I put two legs through the crevasse, I would not be talking about it just now. So uh, that was another moment and you know, there's, there's been a few others. but. Let's face it, uh, these are exotic uh, and far away locations that uh, also come with a certain measure of risk. So I initially I've, I've spent most of my life fil uh, shooting with film, uh, of course, and, uh, and most of my professional life was shot shooting with either medium or large format. Um, the nature of photographing in the polar region has dictated uh, a transition to digital, which admittedly, you know, the, the times were going in that direction as well. So in 2006, I, um, after having had terrible experience with film in cold environments, because the, um, the film didn't respond well to the conditions, uh, the sprockets would break uh, on medium format, uh, moisture would develop on the film, uh, a variety of problems. So I switched to uh, digital. I now shoot with Canon um, and I use the, uh, I've been using the 5Ds since 2006. You know, the various generations of 5Ds, but uh, it's an excellent camera. Uh, but there are a few excellent cameras out there. Uh, Canon is not the only one, but um, it's a very, very good system and more importantly, it's very durable and it has served me incredibly well under very challenging circumstances. So uh, as a result, I really trust the system. Uh, I'm a friend of the organization uh, who has supported uh, you know, my efforts um, and they've got a line of excellent lenses. I primarily shoot with zooms for obvious reasons. Weight is always a consideration and changing lenses is not a great thing to do when it's humid and cold. So uh, in order to reduce condensation on the sensor, it's best to keep the lens on. So I shoot with lens, you know, with um, um, a lot with zooms, uh, the 16 to 35, the ultra wide, uh, the uh, 24 to 70, uh, the medium wide, and then I use the 100 to 400 
as a um, telephoto zoom. Uh, that said, outside of these environments, my favorite zoom uh, of all time is the 85 1.2, uh, which is an extraordinary lens. That's the one that I tend to sort of carry with me all the time. Finding expeditions has to do with your, um, you know, your, your, your desires, your research, your curiosity and your ambition. Um, the fund uh, has to do with uh, being stubborn, uh, being uh, thorough and uh, being patient. Um, and uh, it, it is always challenging, the funding expeditions. In a world where expedition has taken on a, <clears throat> a different um, connotation because in the age of uh, communication and technology where so much of everything is accessible at the push of a button and you can access YouTube videos of just about anywhere in the world and many places on the, uh, the ocean <clears throat> on top of mountains you need to find a, a good narrative that's going to be attractive to um, the sponsors and you need to cultivate relationships and you need to create um, yeah, a story that's going to set you apart from what's already been done and that's always going to be difficult. Anyone who doesn't believe in climate change um, is not even really that interesting to speak to uh, because they're either ignorant of science or refusing to accept science or they have um, a personal objective or interests in, uh, in refusing it or pretending that it's not there. So <clears throat> I don't think the question is whether there is um, climate changing and um, the question is whether or not uh, it is anthrop anthropogenic uh, in uh, uh, in cause and um, uh, and and the speed at which it's happening. So let's just start with the fact that climate change is happening because we don't spend time educating um, scientists or scientists educating us, um, but we don't spend money in colleges and research and funding uh, all types of um, you know of, of research so that we can simply have an opinion about it, you know. Um, climate change is like gravity. You don't say, does it exist or does it not exist? If you're on planet Earth, it exists. Uh, you know, there's a gravitational pull that's going to make things fall to the ground if you let them go. And climate change is the same thing. It's happening whether you believe it or not. It's irrelevant. That's nature. It's just what's happening. You know, the real issue is what is our relationship to climate change or perhaps more importantly what is our relationship to uh, our ecosystem and the natural environment and that becomes a much more complicated discussion. Listen, Russia is uh, definitely um, uh, interesting to me uh, from a, a travel perspective. Um, and by definition, because it has so much coastline uh, over the Arctic Ocean, uh, it's an area of interest to me. I contemplated leaving from uh, Cape uh, Arctic Cheki, which is uh, the farthest um, point of, uh, of, of land in, uh, in Russia, in the Arctic, uh, to reach the North Pole, and I decided against it uh, because actually for the most part, the ice no longer reaches the land in Russia. So to depart for um, the North Pole, you would have to be flown over the open water and dropped on the ice, which is not as interesting to me because it, it prevents you from having a land to North Pole um, accomplishment. Uh, so, but that said, th there are many areas um, which are of interest to me in the, in the northern parts. Uh, areas with you know lots of polar bears inuit uh, you know tribes indigenous tribes um, lots of reindeer you know lots of really really fascinating things to photograph so well the good news is 
that we're moving in that direction and uh, the, uh, the task that we all have is to accelerate this process of transition. And that means uh, taking an interest in uh, disruptive technologies, um, taking an interest in uh, uh, offerings from the business community that reduce our footprint, whether they be in electrical vehicle, in um, um, in <coughs> renewable package, re I mean uh, sustainable packaging, um, uh, reducing our meat consumption uh, would be one. Um, buying electrical cars if it's uh, feasible or possible. Um, not having a car is another option if in fact there is a shared economy. Um, electing uh, politicians or demanding that they uh, address the issue. Um, communicate, research new technologies because algorithms on computers will send messages to the business community that people are interested. So if you research an electrical car, the algorithms of Google or Chrome or whatever uh, will be feeding this into the, um, you know, into the ether to, uh, to the, uh, the car manufacturers and it stimulates uh, the market because they realize that more people are interested in those vehicles and so it sends a message and that's ultimately the business community is going to serve the needs of the consumer and uh, we also need regulation from the government and so if you are vocal about um, your concerns and if you know, political elections in various regions or whatnot depend on uh, what the constituents want uh, then you're also sending a message that way. So be curious, be interested, uh, follow through, buy things, not just because you want them, but because you also have um, a responsibility in your choices. Uh, those would be a, a way to start accelerating the process of transformation.